students, and I also will use some control system case studies, is because I want to focus on the analysis piece of it. If I talk about control systems, most of you don't have technical expertise there, so we can actually th talk through analysis. And if I talk about Disney characters, it actually ties really well to threat intelligence, which is mostly made up. So <laughs> why would the co-author, <laughs> right, so co-author of the threat intelligence class telling you it's all made up, bold move cotton, let's see if it pays off. So I want you to leave here understanding that you're going to come across a lot of characters uh, in the threat intelligence community. And that's basically what I want to talk about today is the types of characters, not focusing on the individuals, but the types. So the first type of character that generally comes up is the little chips of the world, right? And they're squeaking and they talk and they're saying, hey, oh my gosh, I've got this crazy new threat intelligence the world must know about. Please click here and you won't believe number three. So when we see the chips of the world, it's usually like the Chattanooga APT. So what happened in this case was Bloomberg, the news organization, partnered with a threat intelligence company, and we've all seen those, they're basically just PR web statements in the form of a news breach, you know. So they came up and said, we put a honeypot online, it's a control system honeypot, and we saw 8,000 attacks from the US. It turns out the US is the number one targeter of control systems in the world. The problem was, at the very same time that they were doing this, there was a DerbyCon presentation going on where a couple ICS or control system engineers were scanning for control systems on the internet. And every time these people at Bloomberg saw an internet connection or a scan on their honeypot, they registered it as an attack and they tracked it back to Chattanooga in USA for the number one targeted attack in the world. So, not usually good. The next kind of character you'll generally see is the Gastones of the world. They love to see their name in lights. They're very sort of bold, and they love, love, love the attention that you'll give them. Well, back to Bloomberg, it's not always Bloomberg, it just happens to be for control systems this time. Bloomberg put out another story and said, the first act of cyber war was in 2008. There was a pipeline at the time in Turkey that actually did blow up. The BTC pipeline blew up, it was a big commotion, not usually good when your entire oil pipeline has a big disruption in Turkey. That was attributed at the time to the terrorist in the region, KGK. The Turkey government said, we think it's the terrorist. The terrorist said, yep, it was us. And Bloomberg still came out and said, no, it was the Russians. And that's usually not how you do threat intelligence. So what the reporter decided to do is, a couple months ago, published out a report saying, it turns out it was the Russians, it was a cyber attack, they got in through the IP-connected surveillance systems, they got down into the control systems, and instant responders and anonymous intelligence officials told us it was the Russians that attacked the control system through cyber. The problem was the IP surveillance equipment that they said was the initial attack vector wasn't installed until after the explosion as a result, and unfortunately, the type of data they said they gathered from the field systems wasn't enabled. There's no logging on that type of control system that that pipeline had. And what happened here is the reporter did not have the technical expertise on the control systems to know the information they were getting was bad. So in the first case study, we saw someone taking raw data and saying it was intelligence, which it's usually not. And when then the next case study, we saw this reporter who didn't have the technical experience to know what would be good information about an incident. And that's usually why I say most of threat intelligence ends up being made up, is people take raw data and claim it to be intelligence. Your AV signature or your threat feed is not intelligence. Analysts and people make intelligence. Tools are required. It's very helpful to have good tools collect data and to give you better information but no tool can give you intelligence because it requires analysis and analysts. But unfortunately, and this is going to be a little dark to see, some of the biggest, you know, sort of beastly uh, players in threat intelligence that we see combine the features of the two previous case studies. In this case, Norris partnered with a, Norris was a threat intelligence company, they partnered with AEI, a conservative think tank, and they said, you know what? We have identified that the Iranians are preparing for an offensive against the United States, critical infrastructure, and we believe that if you go forward, U.S., with policy negotiations with Iran and the nuclear deals, you will be helping them fund cyber weapons against the power grid. So a threat intelligence company partnered with a think tank to make policy statements about ongoing nuclear negotiations. That's generally what I see to be the worst in the field, is when you leave the bubble of us all being critics on Facebook and Twitter and go out to the world and make policy recommendations to the president. That's not what I like to see based off of your threat intel. The reason for this is the people at Norris, and this is not to bash Norris, they actually have a cool product, but just from this one case study, 
The problem in this case is they took a bunch of honeypots and stood them up, and they looked for scans. And any time they saw an in-map scan against ports related with control systems, not real control systems, they said this was an attack. Any time they saw a TCP connect to a port related to ICS or control systems, they said this was an attack. And then they briefed the government and said there was 500,000 attacks on industrial control systems in the last 24 months. And they didn't tell them it was honeypot scans. And they attribute it to the Iranians based on the fact that they were Iranian IP addresses. Not how you do threat intel. So when we're looking at threat intel, what I would leave you with today is you must get data. You must have technical expertise. Let's get by as I'm going through this. You must have technical expertise, and you must correlate that data and try to break it apart and have uh, critical analysis on it to actually do good intelligence, when then we'll have threat intelligence that we can all rely on that makes our programs better. Thank you.